Hey guys, Samuel Larsen here and today we are going to go over the four different buyer modalities. So we have competitive, spontaneous, methodological and humanistic. And I'm going to go over what this means for you and your business and how you should adapt to these different type of modalities, how you can benefit from this with your e-commerce store. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. So just a little bit of theory, how we buy depends a little bit on who we are and also what we are buying. So some purchases and purchasers are more competitive, logical, some tend to be more emotional. And uh, there's this different type of bias. One is not necessarily better than the other, it's just the differences in human beings. Also, some products are both quicker than others. Some are more deliberate purchases. And also here we also differ in terms of uh, personalities. Some people just like to act quicker than others. Some are more cautious. So here is a rough dividing of these people. So you would kind of like put rough numbers here and see like uh, on average, people tend to be methodological. They tend to be logical, thorough, detail-oriented, and do a little bit of research. However, a big number of people are also spontaneous. They like this like uh, speedy, emotional, exciting, adventure shopping, where they like uh, do decisions really quickly and uh, quite emotionally. So there's a. Uh, Big differences, of course, in how these people buy and also and especially in how you should sell to them. So let's jump into the mind map here. And uh, really the most important part here is understanding how your buyers decide. And this is just a model, of course. So models are always imperfect, but that doesn't mean that we should overlook them. So this particular model is four primary modes of persuasion, thanks to Brian Eisenberg, one of the original zero experts, uh, really like back in like 2002 or something. Uh, he was there, one of the guys who developed the industry. So he said that people's motivations can be completely different depending on the person. And uh, obviously it makes sense if you think about it. But uh, so often we overlook at these type of things. So let's go into why this matters and uh, what are the practical implications of this. Obviously, like um, if you're selling to a person who has different motivations, who has a completely different um, way of purchasing, you would pitch that person a little bit differently. So don't be the person who always uh, use the same pitch and uh, sells the same way to no matter who it is. So implications of course are your value proposition, your copywriting, even your design, whether you go for long form, short form, that kind of stuff. And I think even more importantly, your ads, because different kind of people are going to react to different kinds of ads and the kind of people that react to your ads uh, are also better to be people that buy from you. So that's the practical implications. And uh, this will be very evident quite uh, soon as we are going into some practical examples. But uh, really it's about how buyers both approach buying, but also how they behave during the purchase. So some people might jump into the buying really quickly once they've decided to buy and complete that right then and there. Some might uh, be really hesitant um, once they're in the purchase cycle, but they also jump into the purchase cycle really quickly. So there's a big differences here and uh, we also need to be aware of this. But let's start looking into the four buyer modalities, competitive, spontaneous, methodological and humanistic and see how they differ from each other. I'm going to show you some examples, so it's going to be really evident. And uh, soon you're probably going to walk around to your family meeting or something and like start picking up people like 
this is the spontaneous person and this is a competitive person, etc. Um, of course, it's a model, so not everybody can be grouped into these kind of like small boxes. It's only, after all, it's only four boxes, but it still helps in uh, thinking about this. So competitive. So these kind of people make decisions logical and fast. And um, the archetype I like to think of when it comes to this is uh, Donald Trump. So if you think of a, a hardcore business person, he's making a lot of decisions daily. So uh, he's making them fast because there's just not that much time to make them. But at the same time, they're highly logical. So this is the buyer modality that they're on. It's almost like a performance sport. So they want to perform smart, but not only do they want to perform smart, they also want to make quick and decisive actions. So it's about uh, not only making the right decision, but uh, also not wasting too much time on it. So these are the instant buyers who are doing like the most logical purchases. And it's about performance, so making the right choice effectively, not just making about the right choice, like I just sold you. And uh, in a sense, it is about winning. You could think about it like this, like making the right choice is winning. Getting the best deal is winning, that kind of thing. And uh, we have an example persona here. So let's jump into that. So here is Shane and Shane is always on his phone. So this kind of a busy person uh, doesn't necessarily need to be young, but uh, you could think of like young testosterone field men uh, when you think of this. So they're eager, they're passionate, they're goal oriented and yeah, sometimes young as well. But they, they still make logical choices. So reasons to save money, to get better features for your buck. So very logical choices. Um, wants to find uh, a cheap deal and uh, wants there to be some kind of uh, features there as well. So very motivated by this kind of optimism, excitement, disappointment, uh, this kind of satisfaction. So these tend to be a pretty like logical emotions you would say like um, it's a rush like if you think of like optimism excitement and on the other hand you have the disappointment satisfaction it is a bit of a rush but it's still a logical decision um, so Shane is a, a great example of a competitive buyer all right let's go into the the complete opposite so a great way to find out like uh, the contrast would be to look at a competitive buyer versus a humanistic buyer. So if competitive is fast and logical, humanistic is slow and emotional. So here we have uh, um, slow and emotional buyer. So for this kind of person, ethics are important. Um, we could think of it as like um, amnesty, Greenpeace, that kind of stuff. Although like people like to debate that as well. But uh, you know, uh, it's a very ethical person who likes to feel good about the choice. So uh, who they are buying from is much more of a decision than uh, uh, with the logical buyers. And uh, decision is driven by values. So they need to be able to connect to the brand, store, product, and their story. So there's this saying like, it needs to represent me. If you think of um, like Apple, for example, many people really feel strongly about belonging there, you know? Like uh, they're just kind of like Apple people. And they could be shown a better product um, and they wouldn't take that because that brand wouldn't represent them. So it needs to represent me. And um, an archetype here is Mother Teresa. So 
very humanistic person and uh, probably wouldn't do too bad uh, for anybody. So how to deal with these people? How to get them to actually buy? Uh, like uh, I was a little bit hindered before here. Uh, focus on the social proof, focus on your story. Also, it's great to have testimonials that people can relate to. So not just like uh, little testimonials that like uh, say that this is a great, but like also have the story and the background of the person there. So people can actually feel like they're part of the group. And uh, also interactivity comes to play there. So if you want to make somebody feel like they're part of something, then uh, interactivity is a great way to make that uh, feeling appear. So if you focus on social proof testimonials, then show that you have customers, photos, staff, um, transparency, then uh, that's uh, great for this kind of buyer. So really having transparency there. So that's humanistic. So pretty easy so far. We have the complete opposite here. Uh, Donald Trump versus Mother Teresa. They probably wouldn't get along very well. But let's then look at the spontaneous one before we jump into the methodological one, which is the most popular one. So spontaneous people. And let's start first with how they decide. So there's this like feeling there also associated very much. Uh, so if you think of this like as a frantic woman on a shopping spree, then you're probably pretty close. So buying just makes me feel good. Like um, eating chocolate, that kind of thing. Like uh, it's not very much thought of, like uh, it's not value driven. Uh, it's just like something that makes me feel good. Instant gratification type of thing. And uh, decisions are really driven by feelings. And uh, decisions are also a way to feel better. So that's a woman on a shopping binge basically. I'm sure we all seen that before. All right, how to deal with these people? Um, a strong sense of urgency. Now, why is this advisable? Um, because these people want to make a decision now. So this actually, even if they don't like quite believe in it, uh, one thing that this will do is provide them an excuse. So if they think like there's even a small part of this deal not being there, that actually provides them with a logical excuse that they can then justify their emotions to. And uh, the quicker you can address their needs, the better. So if you have um, fast shipping times, for example, that's really good for these kind of buyers. And uh, I really urge you to get that like instant gratification there and go for that as much as possible. Then, Go for this kind of urgency, like I just said, limited offer, free overnight shipping, this kind of stuff that lets them have it as soon as possible, but also lets them buy as soon as possible. So that's the spontaneous uh, buyer. A lot of clothing stops, uh, you could say, are like this. So if people go and shop clothes, like uh, uh, then uh, they often want to have it spontaneously. It's not something that uh, you go and like, have spec sheet, go there and compare it to another one, like uh, you just buy, basically. So that's that. Now let's look at the methodological buyer at, as the last thing here. So here we are talking about the majority. And 45% uh, on average, you could say, but uh, it's up there, like uh, it's the biggest group that we can say. So methodological buyers and um, obviously internet makes it very easy for people to compare. So that is something that supports this kind of buying behavior. So people who like to make logical, slow choices. Logical and joy, slow. And really like the key here is that being wrong is painful. So they're more motivated by what would be wrong, what could go wrong, than rather than what could be going right. So it's not the 
benefit that they're after. It's more like avoiding the mistake. And that's what makes them really slow. So logical and slow. And uh, really it's like uh, reviewing all the data and all available information. So if you're selling to these people, you better have this data on your site. Like uh, I see so many stores that don't have this information in there. It's just like a, a very tiny print of a couple of paragraphs of text or just one paragraph, couple of sentences. And then uh, they go out and like try to sell to these people. Um, a good example of a, a great methodological buyer oriented product page is actually Amazon. So if you go to Amazon, you can see that their product pages have a ton of reviews. So they supply to this kind of uh, methodological slow buying thing. But also the spec sheets are there. They're very extensive. Every single question is pretty much answered and uh, you can uh, get a very good feel of the product uh, even from the product page only. So it's a great product page for a methodological buyer. Also detail oriented and technical. So once uh, I mentioned the spec sheets, that's very much like what this kind of people like. So they do the research, they ask the tough questions, they compare options and uh, they're willing to dig deep for the information because for them again, being wrong is painful and uh, being wrong makes you feel dumb. I should have thought it more, etc. So they prefer long copy and uh, logical arguments over like uh, the emotional. All right, and uh, very likely to comparison shop. So if you can have some kind of expert opinions there, um, that's a very strong argument again for these kind of people because being wrong is painful. So if there's an expert who says that this product is awesome, all the better, it's way more less likely that they would be completely wrong with their purchase. And the stereotype I like here is uh, an older man driving a Volvo. So this kind of people, uh, they like safety. So they made some mistakes probably in their life. Maybe they're like uh, a little bit more on the older side, etc. So let's look at the example person here. So a couple of things here about uh, Jack, who happens to be an expert car buyer. Um, a great quote. I'm going to try new cars until I find the one that meets my needs. So very logical, slow again. And he's likely to begin his search online and will test drive cars before buying. So no spontaneous behavior at all. It's just like a simply logical, slow. And uh, another read here, he often shows up at the dealer unannounced. He's confident in his choices and therefore doesn't need much help from friends and family. He will do his research and will come to the dealer prepared to negotiate the best possible price. So all that again, slow and logical, hardworking, knowledgeable, goal oriented, confident. So they are confident in their choices, like, uh, but they just need that research behind it. So very much similar motivations as our spontaneous example and uh, similar emotions, just a slower buying cycle. All right, how do we deal with uh, Jack then? So use hard numbers, long copy, and uh, provide uh, things that increase trust, whether it's expert opinions, this kind of trust badges, reviews, etc. cetera, and uh, really pack up your claims as well. So, People like these are naturally skeptical. So these kind of claims need to be packed up. So that was the four buyer modalities. Uh, quite interesting uh, when I first saw about it and uh, definitely makes a lot of sense thinking about it this way. And you might think of your own store, like what kind of buyers do you attract and how do you cater to these different type of buyers? And uh, once you kind of like brainstorm there, uh, you should be able to come up with uh, 
again better copy better value proposition better design better ads this kind of stuff so it can be very helpful and uh, definitely doesn't hurt uh, following these kind of models sometimes at least as an exercise all right thank you for watching make sure to subscribe for more e-commerce related videos and i will see you on the next one thanks